In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Okay, well, welcome to Lesson 5, the final lesson from the Day of Recollection in August 2005, The Three Missions of Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And as happens regularly with the older recordings, sometimes sections are missing. So we are going to begin with a reading, and then we'll fold into when Father Celso begins to teach. Fiat. So last lesson, lesson four, we ended with, to you, Louisa, then, we, God, will give the name of Redemptrix of our will, constituting you, Louisa, mother of all the children of our fiat. Aren't you happy? And so for lesson five, we begin here. Volume 23, December 22nd, 1927. How one who is chosen for a mission... And in parentheses, it has Mary, Blessed Mother Mary, and Louisa. How one who is chosen for a mission encloses all the goods that others must receive. How all redeemed ones turn around the celestial mama, who is the Blessed Mother. There is no good that will not descend through you, Louisa, by virtue of the sphere of my will placed in you nor glory that will not ascend again along the same way. When I choose a creature for a mission that must bring universal good into the midst of the human family, first I fix and enclose all the goods in the chosen one, who must contain all the superabundant good that others must receive, who perhaps will not even take everything that the chosen creature encloses. This happened in the Immaculate Queen Mary, who was chosen to be the mother of the Eternal Word, and therefore the mother of all redeemed ones. Everything that they were to do, all souls, and all the good they were to receive, was enclosed and fixed inside the Sovereign Queen of Heaven, as though inside a sun's sphere, in such a way that all the redeemed ones move around the sun of the celestial mama, in such a way that she, more than most tender mother, does nothing but feed her rays to her children, to nourish them with her light, with her sanctity, with her maternal love. But how many of the rays that she spreads have not been taken by creatures? Because, ungrateful, 
they do not all draw around this celestial mother. So one who is chosen must possess more than what all others together should possess. Just as all find light in the sun, in such a way that all creatures do not take the whole expanse of its light and the intensity of its heat. So it happened with my mama. The goods that she contains are such and so many that more than sun, she spreads the beneficial effects of her vital and vivifying rays. And so it will be for the one who has been chosen for the kingdom of my will. See then how the sacrifice of writing will be repaid to you. First, the good of the ray of that knowledge is fixed in you, and then you will see that good descend through you into the midst of creatures. And in return, the glory of the good that they will do ascend again within that same light. How happy you will be in heaven and will thank me for the sacrifices I had you make. My daughter, when a work is great, universal, and encloses many goods that all can enjoy, greater sacrifices are needed. And the one who is chosen to be the first must be disposed to give and sacrifice her life as many times for as many goods as she encloses in order to give together with those goods her very life for the good of her other brothers. Did I not do the same in redemption? Don't you perhaps want to imitate me? Volume 24, October 3rd, 1928. Exchange between Jerusalem and Rome. My poor mind was thinking about many things regarding the divine will especially about how its kingdom could come, how it could spread, and many other things that it is not necessary to write on paper. And my beloved Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, if Rome has the primacy of my church, she owes it to Jerusalem, because the beginning of redemption was precisely in Jerusalem. Within that homeland, from the little town of Nazareth, I chose my virgin mother. I myself was born in the little town of Bethlehem, and all of my apostles were from that homeland. And here is where we enter with Father Celso's teaching, Fiat. And even though ungrateful, uh, Jerusalem did not want to recognize me, Jesus, and rejected the goods of my redemption, it cannot be denied that the origin, the beginning, the first people who received the goods of the redemption were from this city, Jerusalem. The first carriers of the gospel, those who established Catholicism in Rome, were my apostles, all from Jerusalem, that is, from this homeland, Israel. Now there will be an exchange. So this is a decree. This is a decree from God. Now there's going to be an exchange. If Jerusalem gave to Rome the life of the religion of the Catholic faith, and therefore redemption, Rome will give to Jerusalem the kingdom of the divine will. And this is so true that just as I, Jesus, chose the Virgin Mary from the little town of Nazareth for the redemption, so I, Jesus, have chosen another virgin, Louisa in the little town of Italy, Corrado, belonging to Rome, who in whom, to whom the mission of the kingdom of the divine fiat has been entrusted. It's been entrusted, Louisa. And since the kingdom of the divine will must be known in Rome, just as my coming upon earth was known in Jerusalem. So what does that mean? Well, think about it. This is a divine decree. In October, the cause is going to Rome. He says, is, since the kingdom of the divine will must be known in Rome. This is, this is prophetic. It hasn't even happened yet, but we can see it on the horizon. 
This is going to Rome. Just as my coming upon earth was known in Jerusalem, Rome will have the great honor of requiting Jerusalem for the great gift of the holy divine will uh, given from Jerusalem. Uh, which is, oh, excuse me, the great gift from Jerusalem, which is redemption, by making known to Jerusalem the kingdom of the divine will. So, you know, you look at all the Muslims and all the Jews and who are, you know, hating each other to death. What is going to cause them to be at peace? It's the divine will. We see it right here. Uh, it's very, very clear. God has plans. And it's, it's not by chance that they're destroying villages in Gaza starting today. I mean, it's not by chance that there is a, um, <clears throat> there is a uh, constitution in Iraq starting today. I mean, this is Our Lady's Day. This is the Feast of the Divine Will. It is very, very clear that if, when you look at the history of, of the world, everything happens on Our Lady's Days. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, God is in charge. Uh, and, and, and what's going to happen is everyone will be Catholic. Everyone will be. And there's going to be, it, it's not, they're not going to have any uh, cafeteria Catholics anymore. It's everyone will be a, a faithful and obedient Catholic. So Jesus says, Then will Jerusalem repent of her ingratitude, I mean, once, once the divine will is known in Jerusalem, Jerusalem will repent of her ingratitude, will embrace the life, the Catholic life, the life of the religion that she, Jerusalem, gave to Rome. The Catholic life. The Jews are going to embrace the Catholic life. And ungrateful, excuse me, and then grateful, Jerusalem will receive from Rome the life and the great gift of the kingdom of my holy divine will. See, Catholic, and then uh, once they become Catholic, I mean, what, just tell me what's going to happen that's going to make the Jews Catholic? What's going to happen that's going to make the, uh, the Muslims Catholic? What's going to happen that's going to make the Buddhists Catholic? What's going to happen that make the Hindus Catholic? I mean, something extraordinary is right around the corner. I mean, this is, you know, something wonderful is right around the corner. So he says, and not only Jerusalem, but all the other nations will receive from Rome the great gift of the kingdom by the divine fiat, the first criers of the, of the divine fiat, its gospel, all full of peace, of happiness, and of restoration of the creation of man. I mean, it, Jesus said to Louisa, if the divine will is going to come as if by magic. So let me turn on the light. Click, click. That's how it's going to be. The, now, why? The first purification took 40 days and 40 nights. The flood. The second purification took three hours. Jesus on the cross dying. Uh, uh, he gave up every drop of his blood for our redemption. And the third purification, the fire from heaven, which is the divine will symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, this love of God is going to come upon the earth in the twinkling of an eye. As if by magic, Jesus says. So, I mean... The devil wants us to say, hey, you got plenty of time. Relax. Have a beer. Take off your shoes. Relax. Jesus is saying it's imminent. Jesus is using the same terminology that he used with the apostles 2,000 years ago. I am coming soon. You have to understand the time we're living in. This, it's, you know... Uh, Read. I mean, pray to God that you have the opportunity to read everything that Louisa wrote and put it into practice. 36 volumes. Pray that you have the opportunity to read and reread, to read and read uh, the, this, these, these truths so that they can be, be, begin to bring divine life within you, divine light. Jesus says very clearly, all of the nations will receive from from Rome, the great gift of the kingdom by fiat, the gospel full of peace and happiness, the restoration of man. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, there is really no reason to be worried, be fearful, be anxious, complaining, if you're reading the divine will. If you're not reading the divine will, 
all you have is worry, fear, anxiety, and complaints. There's nothing left. I mean, it's, it's very, very simple. You know, our God has given us this opportunity, and all that he asks of us uh, to, to respond is, is with our fiat. So, Vine 31, October 9, 1932. The sweet sound of the bell, each other's ecstasy of the creator and of the creature. Uh, the bell is, is very important. Jesus calls Louisa the bell, and in, in the church of Our, our Lady uh, uh, Maria uh, Greca, I think it's Greca. Oh God, my mind's, my mind's just disappearing here. I think it's, yeah, uh, Our Lady of the Greek Church. Uh, in the painting there, the miraculous painting, is the little bell. Um, and in the church floor, is uh, it's the little bell. But also, you have, you have the crown of Our Lady. You have the, the globe of power of, of Jesus as King of the Earth. You have the papal cross, and you have the bell. So you have Jesus, Mary, Louisa, and the Pope right, embedded right in the church, right in the windows. Uh, uh, it, it's really easy. Where Louisa is buried, you have the symbol of our Lord and our Lady, the new Adam and the new Eve, and then the, then the Pope, his, his papal cross, and Louisa. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is something that, again, it's, it's all there, in, very, very clear. It's all there to, for anybody to see, uh, yet it's still hidden. Uh, it, was, it was designed by God. Uh, everything is ready. Everything, all that Jesus says is it has to be known. Who is it to be known by? Us. We have to learn this. We have to study this. We have to put this into practice. My daughter Louisa, what sweet memory is the creation of Adam? Adam was created in, in an ecstasy of our love. So much was our love that God, we, God, remain enraptured before our own divine work that we, God, put forth to the light. So God, when God created Adam, he was enraptured by Adam. I mean, he, there was no other gods. And what God did is God gave Adam, a creature, divine life. Why? So that he could, God could give divine life to the creature and the creature could give divine life back to, to God. I mean, this is, this, is what, this is where we're going back to. We're, we're, we're not called to just be good, be nice, be friendly, be courteous, be kind, be obedient. We're, we're called to live the divine life. That's what the priest does every day at Mass. He puts the drop of water under the chalice and he says, may we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. And he puts that drop of water symbolizing us into the cup filled with wine and that wine, that drop of water is fused and diffused into wine. It's not oil and vinegar. It's not separated. It becomes wine. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to enter into him. And that's why he says, he created Adam and it was enraptured by Adam. You know, here is nothing which now possesses divinity, a share in divinity. I mean, this, this is, you know, I, I've seen people, you know, with, with paints that they've created or sculptures that they've made to stand back and go, look at this masterpiece, you know. And it's just a piece of wood or stone, you know, or paint. Jesus says that when God made Adam, he was enraptured by him. How beautiful, how holy, how perfect he created man. He says, The beauty enraptured us, God, with which we, God, had invested Adam. The sanctity that God gave to Adam enraptured us, God, with which we, God, had filled Adam. The form, the harmony, enraptured us, God, with which we, God, uh, had uh, formed him, Adam. The prerogatives, the very qualities of, of, his, uh, of uh, uh, the, uh, his very qualities that Adam possessed was an ecstasy of love that we, God, felt, and it enraptured us, God, uh, to love Adam. I mean, can you imagine... Uh, what we are called. I mean, we're, we're not called to use only 10% of our brain. We're not called to get old, gray-haired, and wrinkled and die. That's not what God made us for. He made us to be one with him, to be his little children, eternally one with him. 
with the preternatural gifts. Uh, and it's not, we're, we're not to be, um, we're, we're, this, isn't, this isn't how we're supposed to live. So what Jesus has done is he's waited 6,000 years. He's finally found the newborn Louisa, giving her everything that Adam lost. And now he's asking us, do you want this? Do you want what I want? Or do you want to continue to live in your human misery? I mean, that's, that's the offer. Give me your rusty penny, Jesus says, and I will give you millions. And we say, well, if I give you this rusty penny, I won't have it anymore. God goes, that's exactly right. Give me that rusty penny of your human will and I will give you the billions of my divine will. And all that, we, all that God is asking is that we, we, we want what he wants. That's all he's asking. So he says, he says, so our love remained shaken, subjected, and putting us, God, in ecstasy uh, subjugated and putting us, God, in ecstasy, it made a, uh, made a rise in us the working, the imperishable love toward Adam. And in an ecstasy of love, and rendered, as we, God, were, we, God, didn't mind to do anything, no limits were put forth. We, God, showed off so much in loving Adam and in enriching Adam with all the goods that, that there uh, didn't remain any void so that Adam's love might be full for us, God. Adam could return to God divine love. Thus, to be able to enrapture us, God, to love Adam continuously. When it's only the memory of how Adam was created repeats for us our loving ecstasy toward him. Now, one Louisa, who turns in our will, as Louisa finds our works, that were prepared in order then to create Adam, it sounds the bell in order to call all creatures, all souls, past, present, and future, to recognize this divine love of God toward man. So, Louisa, since Louisa is in the, in the divine will, it's a bell that sounds, this little bell that's ringing. And Jesus says to Louisa, Louisa, I will ring you continuously until all souls enter into the kingdom. So it's really, it's really important that when we hear a bell, think of Louisa. I mean, when does the bell ring in Mass? It's at the consecration. When you hear a bell, I mean, what do you think of? The ice cream truck coming towards you. I mean, it's, it's good. What's coming is good. It's, it's to adore God, to love God, to praise God. He says, this bell is calling all creatures, past, present, and future, to recognize God's love towards man. It is a sweet sound that calls our attention, reawakens our love, and makes arise in us, God, our ecstasy of love toward mankind. Ecstasy signifies a total repouring uh, toward whom God loves and Louisa, who comes into our will and holds the strength to make us go undergo our ecstasy of love so that we, God, flow in Louisa, and with our divine power, we, God, put Louisa in ecstasy for us, so that nothing remains for Louisa uh, and all flows into our supreme being. So again, what we see is, it's because of Louisa, you know, God is in ecstasy. Louisa is going to bring all mankind to get back to God. Do you see why God loves Louisa so much? It's, it's nothing for her. It's for God's glory. That's the same thing for us. We don't want to do the divine will for, for ourselves. We're nothing. We do this for the glory of God, the sanctification of souls. It, it is to do everything for, for what God wants, not for what we... And the saints, the saints did what they wanted to do. I'm going to build this church for God. I'm going to start this foundation for God. I'm going to uh, start this... Uh, um, you know, religious life for God. I'm going to fast for God. I'm going to do these prayers for God. That's not what the divine will is. Uh, the divine will is is to uh, live uh, one with God so for what God wants done, not for what we want to do for God. So it says, a repouring of oneself into each other's happiness, God into Louisa, Louisa into God. There's nothing that pleases us, God, more than to see Louisa in that same will in which Louisa was created, 
to contemplate our works, to know our works, to feel the pulsation of our love that every created thing possesses. It was the outfit that we got prepared to give to Adam in creating so many things and all, and all the creation. So again, this outfit of light, I mean, this, the clothing of light uh, is what uh, Adam possessed and, what, and that's why Adam was naked. He lost this clothing of light. He lost all the fiat that was, everything was possessed, the outfit, the clothing that we got prepared to give to Adam and created so many things in all of creation. Now, who receives this divine life of the good that created things contain? Who makes use of this outfit, this clothing, so splendid and with right? Louisa. Louisa who knows them, knows these truths. And in knowing these truths, let's Louisa find our palpitating love, our work, our will, our working will. And Louisa loves them and loves in them that, that supreme being who so very much loves Louisa. So who has this clothing of light? It's Louisa. Again, you know, I can just see, you know, you know, Jesus, Louisa says, I'm going to come back, go from heaven to earth, earth to heaven, and volume six, she says, I'm going to come back every month to talk about the divine will. I can see her on the cover of Time magazine. Who is, the, who is this one clothed in light? Who is this one? Who is she? You know? And uh, uh, what's going to convince, I mean, tell me, what's going to convince all the religions to stop their, their, their belief and turn to become Catholic? I mean, you have, to, you have to know something great is right around the corner. I mean, something magnificent is right around the corner. I mean, what is it going to take to make everyone want to be Catholic, to have that universal life again? Uh, uh, this is really, uh, uh, what, what a time to be living in. What a wonderful, glorious time to be living. So therefore, be attentive and constant in turning in our works and in, in, in living in the divine will so that we, God, will give uh, each other the hand, uh, hand in hand in loving each other. We, God, uh, will put one another into ecstasy. And we, God, will, uh, with utility, uh, you, Louisa, will make use of the great clothing that which, with so much love, your Creator has given you. I mean, she's going to have the clothing of Our Lady of Guadalupe, woman clothed with the sun. She's going to have the clothing of Jesus on Mount Tabor, Jesus clothed in the sun, whiter than any uh, bleacher could make them. What, what we're going to see is Louisa. So what, what our God is doing is he's saying he's given us this opportunity uh, to um, learn about Louisa, to uh, grow in the knowledge of the divine will, uh, to link ourselves with Louisa. And we do this by reading, by studying, by putting into practice these truths. I mean, this is a, this is a, an indeed a, a glorious time to be alive. So let us end with the prayer of consecration to the divine will. We'll all kneel for us. Except for those that can't kneel. You're going to have to stand just on one leg. All right. Okay. That's right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh, adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures. Come, O oh, adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat, prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you divine will. It will be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapture of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will will no longer have life. I will banish it forever and will form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. 
With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength and a sanctity that sanctifies everything, everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity, that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will, so as to restore in me the original order of creation, just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me of the Divine Will. You will be my guide, my tender mother. You will guard your child and will teach me to live and maintain me in the order and the bounds of the Divine Will. Celestial Sovereign, to your heart I entrust my whole being. I will be the tiny little child of the divine will. You will teach me the divine will, and I will be attentive and listening to you. You will lay your blue mantle over me, so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden, to entice me and make me fall to the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good Jesus, you will give me your flames, that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me, to form in me the life of the supreme will. St. Joseph, you will be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and will keep the keys of my will in your hands. You will keep my heart jealously, and will never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, Guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial Court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. Now we'll sing Salve Regina. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>